philosophical about it, and I've written a piece on this which has been widely distributed around the world, but I, I believe it. The, the, the future of the world may very well be in the hands, if not of public relations practitioners, though I think it may be, but certainly in the hands of this public relations philosophy. Until we learn how to, to come together, make accommodations, uh, co-author the behaviors, the world just seems to get a, a, a less and less safe place to be. And so I really believe that the future of mankind is more in our hands than anybody else. And when I look at the other professions that might help, I am only more convinced of that. Lord knows the lawyers aren't going to bail us out. Certainly the doctors aren't. They're too busy, you know, trying to just get health care going. Management, holy Moses. I mean, it's, it's not very humanistic still at best. And certainly religions aren't. There's 108 religious wars going on right now. Who's left? Who's left? is public relations practitioners that really have a, a value to the individual, a value to people, and want those people to come together and learn to work together. So I think that for anyone who's in this field or wants to come in this field, they can go all the way from being a very uh, limited technician to being a universal leader of mankind using this wonderful body of knowledge. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm Mike Jackson, Pat's brother. There are hundreds here. I don't know. There are hundreds here and thousands around the world who heard, who listened, who believed, and who practiced the behavioral principles Pat taught us. That spirit, that behavior, and that belief lives on and will live on in the Jackson, Jackson, and Wagner firm. And you can experience that at 2.30 this afternoon at our session in the consulate room. The PRSA board, of which I'm a member, wanted to recognize Pat in a way that would best honor his dedication to the profession. And we realized the society did not have an award that honored service to PRSA. So Pat will also live on through a new permanent award the Patrick Jackson Award for Distinguished Service to PRSA. I'm proud to present that very first award today. Most of you have had your lives and careers touched by the recipient. As the first woman president of PRSA, she continued her enthusiastic support of public relations education. She co-chaired PRSA's Educational Affairs Committee served on three commissions of public relations education and co-chaired the second commission. She was the founder of the Champions, formerly the Friends, of PRSSA. The student organization named one of its annual scholarships for her and also recognized her as one of its lifetime champions in 1993. In 1977, she received PRSA's Gold Anvil and in 1989, it's Community Service Award. In 2000, she was recipient of the Arthur W. Page Society's first Lifetime Achievement Award, as well as the Institute for Public Relations Alexander Hamilton Award. She served as Executive Vice President of Daniel, Daniel J. Edelman Incorporated in Chicago before she joined Illinois Bell, later Ameritech, where she headed the External Affairs Department until her retirement in 1990. No one has given more over the years and continues to give to PRSA than our first Pat Jackson Award recipient. It is with great honor that I present Betsy Ann Plank, APR fellow PRSA, with the first Patrick Jackson Award for distinguished service to PRSA. <laughs>
You probably can't tell it from where you're sitting, but I, the shrinking lady just grew 10 feet tall. <laughs> I need no reminder of Pat Jackson, but I shall take this honor which he inspired home with me, Stacy, and say hello to him every morning. Pat was indeed a legend. He was also friend and colleague and co-conspirator in many good causes. I miss his impulsive notes and phone calls and meetings, those instant meetings which usually occurred in transit to some place or other. Pat believed in this society. He believed in this profession. He believed in all of its students, young and old. And the promise of what we can become. So do I. You are indeed my family of the heart. And I thank you and love you very much. As we bring our Legends panel up and get set up here on the stage, the hotel people said, could you give us just a couple of minutes to clear? And I said, oh, why? So I'm gonna, we're going to do that. We'll get set up and we'll begin what will be another extraordinary program. Thank you.
know I gave you a chance to get up, and now I'm making you sit back down. If everyone could please be seated. Dean. Oh. Ooh, I like this. Legends are people and legends are stories. And you're now going to hear from a group of legends. You've seen their biographies in the program, just mini biographies. So you know a little bit about them. They're very different people. They come from different backgrounds. They have had different career paths. But there are four things that I believe they have in common. They are all visionaries. The people who are able to look ahead and see where things need to go but they're also visionaries with the guts to make it happen. They're action-oriented. They don't talk theory. They make things work. They are all professionals of uncommon integrity. And as so many people have said today in our business, basically, that's what you have. It's integrity. And finally, I know each one of them. These are five of the nicest people I know. They are at once giants, and they are real people. And I'd like to introduce Tom Harris, our 2000 Gold Anvil winner, who's going to moderate the panel and introduce the speakers. And I'd love to ask my friends at the hotel to stop clearing so we can have quiet. Thank you very much. Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Little did I believe that not only would I have to follow Andy Young and Lester Thoreau, but the ghost of Patrick Jackson. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, we're uh, welcome to the, this luncheon. Uh, you're going to hear from uh, four uh, great uh, public relations men, uh, and I hope that uh, next year when the second luncheon uh, is staged, there'll be at least one public relations woman on the stage. Uh, as Kathy said, uh, we've uh, assembled a, a panel of true legends uh, which uh, represent different sectors uh, of the world of public relations. Uh, you have a, a, a brief profile uh, of our four distinguished panels, uh, so rather than use our precious time uh, to, hear more, uh, to hear more about them, uh, I think we should use the time to hear more from them. Um, but uh, representing the, uh, the corporate sector uh, is a, a consummate corporate public relations chief who I just had the pleasure of meeting today, Joe Nolan. Uh, Joe Nolan will be uh, our, our first speaker, uh, and uh, as you will read, he spent uh, 30 years with RCA, with Monsanto, with Chase Manhattan Bank, uh, where I'm told he served uh, as the strong right hand of a fellow named David Rockefeller. Um, representing the agency side of the business are leaders of what I choose to think are the two largest public relations firms in the world.